Chapter 43. Graham was right. It was a great party. Flint's girlfriend got everyone to find partners and started calling the dances. Mum Binter was up there swinging around on Hamish's arm. Robin Ewan and some girls from school pushed Geneva around and around in the wheelchair. Music played, people ate and drank and danced well into the night. The only person who wasn't there was Mr McNair. Mum had offered him a lift, but he didn't come. He told Mum he'd given up dancing a long time ago. I'm really sorry about Iris, said Geneva. Hamish told me. We sat beside each other at the back of the hall while the band worked the dances faster and faster. I wanted to see her so much, I said. Geneva nodded. I kept looking into the sky today. I hoped to see her on the way here. I looked across at Geneva. It struck me how real she was. Not just a name at the end of an email. She was actually here right now, after all that had happened. I'm glad you're here, I said. Geneva smiled at me. She reached across and squeezed my hand tight. I am too. Dad flopped down in a chair next to us. Sweat was pouring down his face. Mum, I've been to a can't half dance, he said. We looked across to see someone else twirl Mama Binter by the arm and whisk her away across the dance floor. You both look shattered, said Dad. It's gone twelve. Come on, you two. Let's get you home. I've got to check on the sheep anyway. Hamish drove us home. We huddled under coats in the chill night air. The mountains were blue-black against the midnight sky. A thin veil of mist circled the moon like a halo. Go on in and make yourselves a hot chocolate, said Dad. I won't be long checking the sheep. Hamish helped Geneva down from the Land Rover. Geneva propped her crutches under her arms. Look, she said, the doctors say I can try and walk a little on the crutches now. That's just amazing, smiled Hamish. He helped her across the stony yard to the kitchen door. Hamish, I said, will you take us up to the hill tomorrow morning? Just us, I said. I promised to show Geneva the iry. Hamish nodded. I'm working tomorrow, so it'll have to be early. We'll be early, I said. I followed Geneva slowly into the kitchen. Do you want hot chocolate, I asked. Geneva nodded. I love hot chocolate. I have it all the time at the hospital. She sat down at the table while I boiled the milk and stirred in the chocolate powder. She looked tired her head propped up in her hands, her eyes half closed. I felt tired too. It had been a long day. Here, I said. I pushed Mum's pile of laundry and Dad's paper to the side and put the steaming hot ch chocolate in front of her. I sat down and wrapped my hands around my own mug, letting the warmth seep through me. I was so tired, I felt like I could have stayed like that, just staring into the steam. I watched it spiral slowly upwards. It made me think of Iris circling high in the sky. The swirling drift of, st of steam stretched its feathery wings and flew in slow, lazy circles into the air. It rose higher and higher and brushed my face with the tips of its wings. It whirled over the newspaper and iron shirts on the kitchen table. It soared across the white buttoned mountains and worded valleys. It drifted towards me again. I wanted to hold it in my hands, hold it and keep it forever. I reached out my fingers, but it slipped through them, dissolving into wispy threads and was gone. Geneva was looking at me, smiling. You know, she said, maybe you are a, like the marabout. Maybe the bird spirit, she flies to you too.